Welcome to the Every Gen Podcast. I'm Andy Brady, joined in studio by Louisville High School legend. Wow. Voted most likely to quote a dead author by his fellow fighting farmers, <laughs> Dr. Jim Thomas. How are you, sir? I asked a close friend of yours if it would be okay if I said that, and Brad said yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I shall, and yes, I do, and yes, I am. <laughs> Hi, Andy Brady. How are you today? Good, good. We've good. got a crowded ta- uh, set of tables today. Mm-hmm. We have our kids' pastor, Brian McKay, with us. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank Brian. Thank you for joining, thank Brian. You and then our legendary family minister, Jimothy Garner. Wow. Uh, it's now out there for three years. It is. His nickname has been Jimothy from the college ministry. That's great. And it has been a slow burn, but my intention has been to get that what all of Parker County knows him as. <laughs> and if you get a, if you want a nickname out of that, we have dubbed him OJ now since Mr. Simpson has passed on. Uh, so yep, yep. he is he is he is old Jim yep. compared to me. He is old Jim compared to me. You don't have a Bronco, do you? No, no Broncos. <laughs> That's too far. We'll cut that later. Uh, all right. Today we are discussing long walks on the beach with Jesus. All right. Gentlemen, as I have gotten older, I have learned that there are a few different types of people who vacation. And today's episode is is about the summer. Uh, The first type of person is someone who wants to be a good steward of the opportunity, someone who is faithful before God, and they want to explore and experience what they cannot explore and experience at home. All right, we go on vacation. If we're in somewhere that's mountainous, man, let's go conquer this mountain. Let's go hike. Let's go play. Mm -hmm. Let's go swim. Let's go do what this place has to offer. Uh, the second type of person is the overly detailed itinerary crowd. Yeah. We we will not sleep. We will not enjoy. We will not <laughs> linger anywhere. Uh, you can tell which one I'm certainly not in. Uh, <laughs> and then there is the third crowd. Um, and my wife and I are not in the same crowd on this spectrum. There's the third crowd that says, let's spend money to go somewhere and take a nap in a new location. Amen. Uh, okay, so Brian has is, Brian is revealed what he's got to repent of. Since all, all three of you have raised families, I have uh, two questions. Uh, one is, which one are you? And the second is, um, within your family, if you all do not share that same mentality and approach to vacations, how did y'all decide how to spend your vacations? Mm -hmm. So, Brian? Honey, what do you want to do? We (laughs) went on vacation. (laughs) That's that's it. We're talking about where we're we're going to go next January and stuff. I mention a place. Mm -hmm. I walk into the closet. I grab my shirt to go iron for something. I walk back out of the closet, and she goes, okay, I've been researching on this. Okay. I literally just, boom, like that. She is that... She is that planner and stuff. So a lot okay. of that, she gets joy from that. Okay. So, and I get joy from going, yeah, wherever you want to go, that's fine. <laughs> that, that's, fine that's fine with me. You just want to take a nap yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, just, I want to go and just enjoy the opportunity to be there. Okay. I love to go to Disney World. Okay. I really enjoy it. My wife and my kids, they want to go, I gotta do, we got to do this ride and this ride and this mm-hmm. ride. I told her, next time we go, mm-hmm. y'all go do that. I'm going to go find a nice tree. I'm going to get me a nice dessert. I'm going to sit underneath that tree, and I'm just going to watch people. I just enjoy the fact of just being there. I okay. just like being there. It's like, okay, oh, I can kind of relax. That's fair. That's fair. I'm a little bit all three. Okay. Um, if it's only number two, it drives me crazy. There's no rest mm-hmm. in that for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to go do where, if we go someplace, I want to do what's there. Yeah. Um, I want to have some type of an itinerary with breath, mm-hmm. and I want to take a nap. In fact, uh, one of the times we went to Disney World, and, and I think it is a season of life thing too. When you have younger kids, you operate a little different yeah. than you yeah. do when the kids are older and are more self sufficient yeah. to the point where you can even send them out and I'm going to be exactly. in the hotel taking a nap. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Oh, wow. What we found with young kids at Disney World specifically, we went all day one day. I mean, from opening gate to fireworks, and it was nightmarish. Yeah. So the rest of the week, we actually did the morning, did lunch, came back. One parent took the kids to the pool. We rotate taking yeah. naps. 
and then we go back to the park. Yeah, oh. that, that, we started doing that. And that too, was yeah. so, and we enjoyed the entire day. That's a great day. tip. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even consider Remember that. Well, the middle of the day, it's so stinking hot. It's so it's hot. Just, we just go back with lines the, are so long. Yeah, you know, all the kids wanted. When I found out the mm-hmm. first time we took my my daughter and son, is they just wanted to go back to the. We're in the we're in the park. We just want to go back to the hotel hotel room and go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> How much money did we spend for this trip? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stop hopping parks. And there's a, there's, a, there's so, a pool at the Holiday Inn in Weatherford. Yeah, right. <laughs> it costs a lot less money. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm Jimothy? definitely the middle one. Oh, you like pack as, oh, pack yeah. as much. Are you serious? Oh, a checklist yeah. guy. How much can we pack in uh, in a day? Oh, no. And that's how I live We're life. It's not just vacation. You, and you are full you itinerary? Oh, totally. <laughs> oh, my word. Whether I'm on vacation or whether I'm working Monday to Friday. Like, yeah. what can I get done? How much can I pile it on? to get it all done, okay. and then I can relax and enjoy it, not when I go to bed and then get up and start over the next day and see what else I can accomplish. And wow. That's, yeah, my wife, on the other hand, didn't work well with vacations and time because she's not that way at all. Yeah. And she won. Most of the time <laughs> I had to learn to slow down and rethink, and, and she was right in most of those things, as always, in life and everything. It yeah. helped me learn to be a little more balanced and back off of that as much. But, yeah, that's really who I am. Wow. we um, So my wife and I are not in the same category. I am a... I, I feel like I got to be a steward of the opportunity, and there are experiences here, and I want to catch every experience this place has that I can't catch at home. Uh, so not with an itinerary, but just uh, hey, what looked appealing? What looked neat on the way in? All right, let's go. Let's go squeeze all the juice out of that lemon. So are either of you flexible in your itinerary? I don't. I don't itinerary. You don't I just itinerary. See it as wow. You just say like, next. Just are you flexible? Hippie. To where the next thing falls on your list, but the rest of the group goes. We'd rather go do that now. You be? Yeah, Mission you Pastor be? Jim has learned to be flexible. <laughs> I have to be with family, right? Yeah. You have to be flexible. <laughs> Jim uses but, vacation as mission trip to the family. I do that too, <laughs> yes. But, you know, there's plans you got to do, but I, I, I've learned to be flexible and get that in. But I know when you go somewhere, you want to pack it all in. Yeah. And so I don't have to spend you 10 hours at one place. Yeah, him, him, I want to yeah. go to see a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I can accomplish the city in one day, and let's go to the next city or whatever to accomplish. That's so. fair. We on our honeymoon, we you know we were in a different country that neither of us had ever been to, and obviously Jordan and I had never vacationed just the two of us before our honeymoon. Mm-hmm. So this we're we're learning this about one another, and uh, like day one, she's like, or I asked her, "What do you want to do?" She's like, "I kind of want to take a nap." I was like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> if we nap during the day, how are we going to ride ATVs to a cave? <laughs> like, there's, did you not see that on our way in? There's, there's a whole cave we've never been to. I can nap on a plane. Like, mm-hmm. let's go. Um, so we've uh, struggled. I struggled. She was fine. Uh, I've learned over time. There's some give and take. Like, yep. as we come in and, and as I see things, it's like, hey, I for sure really want to try that direction. Like yeah. I got a gypsy itch. I see something neat. I just want to go explore it. Yeah. Um, but then to leave some space. But then also um, a little bit of time. Of, hey, you can go nap. I'm going to go walk the streets mm-hmm. and fully yeah. explore the city as much yeah. as possible. Um, so all, all that being said, um, summers, I think we all view summers probably somewhere in one of those three uh, categories. Either it's a time to relax, maybe catch a little bit more rest uh, than than during the school year. Uh, let's have a detail for every day um, or whatever presents itself in the day. Let's just attack it with gusto. But uh, would, and in, in, this is open to the floor, uh, would any of y'all say that when we get to the rhythm of the summer, that it is uh, more common for us to find people in their walk with Jesus maybe experiencing a bit of a hiccup where the routine has been altered or adjusted from the school year and there's just kind of a a lapse if you will a little bit have y'all seen that what could you speak to that a little bit yeah over over all the years of, of ministry summer is always the time where I mean, you can see it at church. Mm-hmm. There's fewer. I've got fewer kids upstairs. Mm-hmm. We have fewer families uh, in uh, in the auditorium and stuff. So yeah, a lot of people they're gone. They call me. Hey, we can't be here to mm-hmm. to serve or, or whatever it is, and they're out. You get on Facebook. You see, they're all 
out. Life is totally different in the summer for so many of our families. And yeah. Stuff. It was for me, you know, my wife works. And so when my kids were off, a lot of times they were up here at the church with me or I yeah. was at home with them or we were out running around doing things. And then I would get stuff done, you know, at night Yeah. So when my wife was around. So yeah, we see it all the, all the time. That's good. Yeah. I think it, it makes it tough on families. Uh, just the busyness. I mean, we say summer's supposed to be relaxing, and it's, but it's a, just a different busyness. Yeah. It's a different mm-hmm. season. Yeah. That's a challenge in doing student ministry for 30 years, and whether it be working with middle school kids, high school kids, you just see when you had them, you had them for a week at camp or a yeah. week on a mission trip and or local projects and things you did. You had some great intentional time with them in those moments, mm-hmm. uh, but then when you were done with that, they were gone to okay. grandparents or baseball tournaments yeah. or vacation or mm. vacation yeah. with a friend and all that. So you didn't have that regular kind of time for maybe some regular discipleship or a special time you'd like to have with getting a rhythm with that. And so it always was a challenge, but when you had those moments, they could be very fruitful, kind of like summer, the time that we have in the summer we may have some crazy schedules, but when we have those moments at home as a family or even traveling, the things yeah. that we can do to be intentional with that is really key. That's good. And and just to clarify from the beginning, because I don't want anybody getting the wrong idea, we're not saying time with grandparents in a different town is wrong. Vacations right. are not right. wrong. Yeah. Not Baseball wrong. camp, while probably not the best sport because that would be football, Baseball oh, wow. camp, not wrong. Mm. Soccer camp, always wrong. Maybe uh, a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's not maybe communist kickball. Way. Communist <laughs> kickball, Jimothy. <laughs> communist kickball. Um, I'm just throwing my own opinion in. Um, yeah, I apologize for that, Lord. Uh, but it's these are real things. These are neutral things that interrupt our rhythm. But it makes sense that as they interrupt our rhythm, mm. they also interrupt our rhythm of our walk. What... Um, What would you say are perhaps some ways uh, that has helped you as the individuals at the table? Because we all have different routines in the Mm -hmm. summer. Uh, What are some ways that have helped you maintain and even grow in your walk during the summer? Because I think all of us have dramatically different schedules in the summer. Right, yeah. Um, What are things that help you or have helped you over the years? You know, I think that the first thing is to remember as a Christ follower, we never take a vacation from Jesus. Amen. You know, so if you're a good churchman but not following Jesus, you know, if if church is an activity you do during the week and not the corporate gathering of the body of Christ Mm -hmm. where you're encouraged and grown and sent, if you have a different mentality about what church is and it's just a thing you do mm-hmm. instead of this extension of a walk with Jesus, then you can see it being a very separate thing. But I think we don't take a vacation in our walk from Christ. Mm-hmm. And so actually summers can afford us incredible breath in our walk with Christ, mm-hmm. right? Like usually if from an adult standpoint, Brian, and from a kid standpoint, Wednesday nights are done. Right. So that study is done for that for that spring. Our our adult Bible studies are done for that spring. Uh, our Sunday morning Bible studies and and worship services continue mm-hmm. obviously year round. But any weekday Bible studies or anything else you're involved in like that are kind of done for the spring, and it gives you the breath to do things in your personal walk yeah. that you might not have the breath to do during the school year. That's good. And through the rest of the year. So there may be a book that mm-hmm. you've never read and you've heard a, bol- a ton of times, like maybe something from C.S. Lewis, um, to get back to your original <laughs> Most question. Most likely to quote, quote a dead author. A uh, dead author. Um, or Making may- the fighting farmers proud. So. That, I, absolutely. Uh, Big John. Um, I'll, uh, anyway, um, but a book to, by C.S. Lewis. Uh, but yes, thank you. Um, and maybe there, or maybe there's a Bible study that that you wanted to do personally, but we weren't doing at the church, or mm-hmm. or something like that. And the summer gives you the breath to be able to do some personal formation. That's good. Whether you're sitting at home, whether you're sitting on a beach chair, or wherever you happen to be, you can't do it while you're napping, Brian. But. Um, <laughs> But audible, uh, yeah, that's audible. <laughs> if you say so. Don't know how much is going to osmosis into your brain Sparking at that point. since 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says that sermons too. Um, <laughs> but but to find that breath and to do some things you wouldn't do in your normal rhythm mm-hmm. to help you grow and then to bring back what God has done in you personally in the summer into corporate environments as the school year mm-hmm. kicks back on. That's good. That's a good word. Um, any other just thoughts or experiences of using the summer as maybe a chance to be a catalyst for our walk with Christ and yeah. on a personal level. 
for me, um, you know, try to get as the weather gets nicer late spring in the summer, use it more as some physical time for either working out, whether it be walking in the neighborhood mm-hmm. or having a set schedule mm-hmm. every morning because you don't have to worry about getting kids or grandkids to school, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. and can just en- enjoy that time where you're out with the Lord, just walk in and you can worship as you walk. Mm-hmm. You can pray for your neighbors. There's That's just good. so many things you can do um, just within normal home schedule um, as you're out doing things. Um, that are that are valuable, that are refreshing, uh, just in that time with God. And like Pastor Jim said, just about reading, reading something new and different, you yeah. know, something you personally take in. Maybe it's a certain, maybe you haven't read, you've read in the New Testament, maybe you choose to read through the Old Testament. Just some different things you can do, and even incorporating your kids into that and teaching them some basics of that with um, in the Word and what that looks like and having some fun teaching our kids. You know, we get so caught up in summer, it's my time off. It's all about yeah. me and yeah. what I want to do. Versus like, okay, what can we do to show Christ's love, um, serving, giving, praying, doing some things for our neighbors, That's um, good. things like that that we can do and make that a new rhythm in the summer. Yeah, you can still do a lot of what you want to do, but Absolutely. there's some time that we can put other people first and just kind of reinforce those biblical values that Christ wants us to have. That's a good, yeah, that's, that's good. good. Yeah, I think the idea of, of and, it's, and it's a biblical idea, a theological idea of Sabbathing, yeah, you know, we talk about Sabbath maybe being a day of the week, and a lot of Christians relate that to Sunday, which that is our Sabbath, if you will. But Sabbath being a theological concept and a more broad concept of how can summer help us to establish rhythms of Sabbath, rhythms of rest in our lives that are yeah. healthy for us. Uh, Jim mentioned uh, physically, spiritually. Uh, you were talking about naps, so you mentioned physical nap. Napping is all, a spiritual that's all gift, I'm about. absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, reading, listening. Um, uh, sitting and doing nothing in nature, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, breathing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking up instead mm-hmm. of down right. all the time, finding these rhythms and teaching, back to what Jim said a second ago, teaching your family a different rhythm of what Sabbath might look like in a season where we're allowed to do that. There are quotes I'm putting up for our listeners. Yeah. Where we're allowed to do that. But then integrate those ideas into the times where we don't feel allowed to do that in the daily grind of work, in the daily grind of school, yeah. all those things. And how do we take the idea of the Sabbath, breathing, resting? You know, I mentioned this in a message uh, in the spring. Of my wife says, you know, the whole rhythm of life is breathing in, breathing out. Yeah. If we just breathe in, we're not going to live very long. If we just breathe out, we're not going to live very long. And so that concept is really a concept of Sabbath. Yeah. Breathe in, breathe out. And where do we take time to do that in a regular schedule? And I think summer yeah. can be a catalyst for that becoming a new discipline in our lives. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. That's good. That's good. The, um, Jim, uh, Jimothy, as, as you were speaking, um, specifically about neighbors and the opportunities that exist, mm-hmm. um, our kids are, we have young school age children, right? We're past the baby stage, we're past the toddler stage, but we're not yet to the um, y'all go swim and we're going to be in the hotel room stage. Right. Yeah. Uh, that That's not where we're, we're at yet. But um, man, bedtime because of school the next day, mm-hmm. like that exists yeah. mm-hmm. all yeah. school year long. Right. And now that lid is blown off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, like we, we'll try to observe a semblance of a bedtime. Yeah. But 7.30 to 8.30 really is kind of like, uh, you want to go do something? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sun's still up. Man. Sun's still up, man. I remember mm-hmm. being five years old and mad because there's no way it could be my bedtime while the sun <laughs> yeah. is still up. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. Um, but and I would think ice cream would be involved in that. I mean, yeah. Right? It has yeah. to be. It has, it has to be. be. The, but there's an opportunity to practice and demonstrate hospitality with our neighbors mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and just in getting to know them and if i can't seize that moment and the opportunity of the summer where i don't have a pressing bedtime for my kids mm-hmm. and my alarm clock still exists tomorrow but theirs is slightly different mm-hmm. than during the day um then we're probably not going to be able to work it in during the s- 9 months of the year that we have school yeah, right. and, yeah that's good and and opening up our life or our home to neighbors or friends that god may have us uh having our orbit to want to be around. What would, um, as as we look at our summers, um, what would y'all say are maybe some fundamental pieces that you've seen present in the life of individuals or families 
that allowed Summer to be a catalyst for their faith? Uh, what were some things that, hey, whenever I see this present in a summer, I tend to see a person that summer is becoming a bit of a growth spurt instead of a hiccup. Or when I see this present in the children in our ministry, this has been helpful to them on the whole. So that as, as, as if I'm a parent listening to this or I'm just an individual listening, I hear this and I'm like, okay, I'm going to commit to putting that in, into our summer this year. What, what might be some of those things? I, I've, I've got several parents that the summer is this, is, this is their time. They feel like this is their time with their kids. Yeah. Uh, and so they're out doing stuff all the time and God is in it. You know, That's they're awesome. posting stuff on Facebook and, and scripture, they got their kids and their kids are, are saying, you know, look at this beautiful sunrise, what, whatever it is. Yeah, it's yeah, usually yeah. has something to do with animals or something, you know, <laughs> and they're just thankful for, you know, they're showing their kids, Hey, this is God's creation. And he created it. One reason for us to enjoy it. Yeah. And we can come out and we can praise him because of what he's put around us and stuff. Awesome. It's neat to see these these families out on hikes with their kids and talking about uh, uh, just daily life and then the things around them and then looking up and going, you know, God's in control of all this and he created this for us oh, to enjoy yeah. and stuff. So it's really neat to see families doing that That's good. together. So time with, just time with them. Yeah, just time with them. Intentional time Yeah, with away them. from the phone. They yeah. put the phone away, unless they're taking pictures of the kids. And some of them, it's too much. I, I'm not a picture taker. Same. At my house, my wife is always, okay, if you're going to go do this with Charlie, make sure you've got the camera out. Uh, no, I'm not going to take any pictures. I just tell her, I'm not going to take any pictures. I'm I'm in the moment kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. If other people are there, I'm like, can you text my wife a picture? <laughs> <laughs> that That's but good. Yeah, that, that, that time that, that you're investing in the kids, when you're out doing something, mm-hmm. put the phone away, mm-hmm. uh, leave it in the car. Yeah, you know, and just be there for your kids. Yeah, in, in this moment. And I would imagine we don't yet know what a generation of children being raised by parents with smartphones looks like as adults yet. Uh-huh. Right, we're still early. We we don't yet have yeah. an ethic for this. Um, but I would imagine. I imagine that. Um, it's a lot easier for my children to believe that God loves them, cares about them, and has a plan for them individually mm. if they see me as dad giving them my individual mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. instead of them seeing me as dad. And I'm guilty of this, uh, giving my phone my individual time yeah. in the same room as my kid. Right. right? And there's a rhythm. Yeah. There's a balance there to is. it, right? There's, there's both sides of it. Um, gems, either one. Mm-hmm. Is there something that you have seen kind of consistently present in the life of people where the summer becomes a catalyst? We've spoken to rest. Mm-hmm. We've spoken to new opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any consistent elements that you've seen throughout your your individual life or, or your ministry life? From a ministry perspective with students for so long, mm-hmm. for me it was watching um, a kid come into the youth group, whether it was a middle school or a new high school, or um, not knowing if they were new here to our church or where they came from, but getting involved, um, you know, it was always summer. Summer camp was great. It's fun. We still love summer camp. Northside's always been a big church about camp. Yeah. But seeing, you know, what a lot of it's built on your personal growth and fun, experience with your friends. But when we started challenging them to mission trips, whether we do a local project or whether we went somewhere, and then to see a kid learning to share their faith on a mission trip with somebody, leading a Bible study with children at a VBS in a park or Mm -hmm. uh, different ways they could serve. And it wasn't like, a I have to do this, but they wanted to do this. And then understanding the community of how much easier it is and fun when you're doing it with your friends and you can serve Christ together as a community of faith is special. But it didn't just end in the summer as they continue to do this to ask kids or they would bring it up, you know, if I had to choose the times they were getting older, I would choose mission trip over summer camp. Okay. Because it, it quit yeah. being less about them and more about others and yeah. serving Christ and giving that way. And then they take what they learn there in the summertime and then when they get back to their school and their mission field, mm-hmm. whether they're in the locker room, in the theater room, band, or wherever the who the group is, yeah. their focus is on how do I lead them to Christ, how do I serve Christ this way in these relationships yeah. that I have now on my campus and taking the things I think they've 
that energy and that charge in the summer mm -hmm. that they can bring that into the school year and trying to make a difference on their campuses. That's yeah. awesome. That's a good yeah, word. I saw that in my son over these few years. He, mm -hmm. he prefers the mission trip over mm -hmm. to be able to serve, and then he comes back. That's what he does. He gets involved in helping other people. So it's really cool to see that. As a as a parent, um, so your youngest is, is a high school graduate just graduated, right now. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, as a parent that receives their children on the back end of a mission trip or a camp this summer, um, and this could maybe even broaden up to if we send them to grandparents' house or whatever, do you have maybe like a word of advice or a, or a tip for a parent who is their first child, so they've never experienced a kid coming back from a mission trip they were not a part of? Is there maybe something that could help them in that initial wave of debrief or come home, tell me about the trip? What something that might help their household? I think one big thing would be when, when they come home, listen. Okay. Listen to it. You yeah. know, be, be excited about it. They're excited about what they're sharing with you. Yeah. Uh, be inspired by their growth during this time. I know a lot of kids come back and they're, they're on this big high. They are on a big high, and, and mom and dad need to see that and encourage that to continue. Amen. And I think to encourage that to continue, Mom and Dad, find a place to serve with your mm -hmm. with yeah. your kids and stuff. Yeah, I that's think that's word. formative. I think one of the, one of the things with our girls is let them get a good night's rest before mm -hmm. we start peppering them with oh, questions. <laughs> oh man, um, because it's they got in the car after camp. They just got off a bus ride for however many hours away, and we're like, "How was it? Tell us everything yeah. you learned. Tell Haven't us what Jesus did." Tuesday, and they yes. automatically hate you. And <laughs> so let's. Why don't we go get Chick Fil A? Mm -hmm. and get you a shake and get you home and let's start washing clothes and let you go to bed. Yeah. And then tomorrow, let's talk about everything that God did. And, and what that did is give them a breath, allow them to even bring up some stuff. Because sometimes what we found when, we, when, that, when we gave them that space, mm -hmm. they would initiate the conversation. That's good. Mm -hmm. Because it's what they just experienced. It's what they really want to talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But... We needed to give them that breath so that they could have ownership over the conversation as well. That's good. But I think the other thing that Brian said was 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 good in the sense that of challenging families during the summer to to serve together somewhere. Yeah. Uh, not just I, I think I'm, I'm a huge camp fan because that's where my life was transformed and where I was called to ministry. And we want to put kids, whether it be VBS or camps, in a position to encounter Jesus with others their age group yeah. at a level they can understand. But we also want to encourage the family to serve together somewhere. That's good. Uh, in fact, on one of our mission trips this summer uh, uh, to Brazil, we have several family units going. We have mm -hmm. a couple going. That's cool. We have two dads and their daughters going. Mm -hmm. We have a grandfather and a grandson going. Wow. Let's go. And that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, have I missed anybody, Jim? Those no. are the ones. Those are the. You got it, yeah. But these families get to actually go. Now, when they get on the field, they may be doing different things, but they're going to circle back around in large group times and be together again, right? And they get to experience the kingdom of God expanding as a family. That's and I great. think, you know, you don't have to go to the other side of the world for that to happen. But how could parents, Brian, maybe this is a, a question, how can parents figure out a way for them to serve with their kids, even if it's just for an afternoon, even if it's just for an experience once or twice a summer to where they're being selfless, like Jim said a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and actually pouring their lives into somebody else. And I think if they could find ways to do that, that's not even programmed by the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it becomes a new rhythm in the life of that family. Yeah. Of, this is what we do. That's good. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think build on that. What would it look like if a, you know, your son if is out even in the yard and you say you had an older neighbor and you see them bent down in their yard mm -hmm. pulling weeds or in the yeah. weed bed and he comes like, Hey dad, do you think we could go over and help them? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that that yeah. we can do if we just stop and the summer gives us opportunity those times to stop, yeah. look around, let's discuss as a family what can we do together. Yeah. Um, and serving our community, serving our neighbors. Which, Jim, kind of gets back to the idea of living for Jesus in any environment that you're in, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're at Disney World and there's a 12-hour wait for It's a Small World, <laughs> you know. I'm not in that line. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I've never been to Disney World, yeah. and y'all are 
affirming I need to continue <laughs> yeah. to delay. Oh, going there to are Disney World. websites on hacks for all of that <laughs> yeah. stuff. But, but, or if you're going out to eat as a family and you're at the beach and all of a sudden there's a 45 minute to an hour wait because of everybody yeah. trying to get into that restaurant. How mom and dad act like, yeah, how yeah. mom and dad act like Jesus yeah. is going to show their yeah. kids how they are supposed to act like Jesus yeah. in a stressful situation. Yeah. Yeah. And so to, even if you're sunburned and you're dehydrated and you got flip-flops on and a shirt like Jim's wearing today, if you're watching online, <laughs> um, and, you're, and you're wearing all this stuff and... And you're just you just need fried shrimp and sweet tea. That's just yeah. what you need in that moment to make the world right again. But you're not going to get it for a while because all these people got in front of you. How are you going to respond? That's good. And I think that discipleship within the family happens in the normal rhythms of life. Yeah. And summer provides the most concentrated time mm-hmm. that parents and kids get to spend in those type of environments. Yeah. That's you good. know, and so I think living that out taking the spur of the moment things like you're talking about, Brian, Mm -hmm. of, oh, there's a need. How can we meet that need? You know, whether it's even opening a door for someone at a restaurant Mm -hmm. or someone drops something and now we start living like Jesus in front of them. That's good. That's good. Um, Brian, when we're uh, speaking of summer, right, if, if people who are listening uh, are currently growing up in church, or they did grow up in church. Church, when I say that, I'm mostly meaning just Protestant in America. Um, there's always the VBS and the Vacation Bible School. Um, we took a couple years off from that because of COVID. Um, and my children have been, and uh, they loved it. Yeah. They loved it, right? It, it was fun. But if if I'm somebody who's listening and uh, maybe we're unsure if VBS is how we're going to spend that week. I'm, I'm not asking for a commercial. Um, but I have seen, and Jim, this speaks to what you were saying earlier, a consistent element is being engaged in what the ministry God has called me to be a part of is yeah. doing. And, and that in the summer, it slows down. There's less frequent opportunities, but committing to those opportunities. If um, we're considering our, our children coming to VBS, or if I'm considering volunteering in it, um, what kind of goes into the rationale or the why for VBS and Northside Kids? Is it, man, we just want them to come have fun, or here's our overall aim and objective, but like like what kind of, um, what's the main drive behind the recipe of your gumbo? (laughs) <laughs> I just give me hungry there. I is just it, rolled four analogies into one right is there. It too spicy. <laughs> Not a gumbo person. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the beans in your chili? Uh, <laughs> all right, Andy. All right, Andy. Uh, there's really two. There's really two main ingredients. The the first one and foremost is we want to present Jesus to these kids. Okay. We want an opportunity because so many of these kids who will come to Vacation Bible School uh, don't attend our church or they don't attend church at all. And this is maybe their one opportunity to get to hear that there's a God in heaven who created them and loves them and wants them to be part of His family. Mm. And so we want. It's it's presenting Jesus. It's presenting yeah. Jesus. So many of our kids have heard it that are in church all the time, but it's amazing. They may have heard it a dozen or more times, but this could be the first time where they respond. Amen. And yeah. so it's all mm-hmm. about it's all about leading kids to Christ, you know, presenting Jesus to them. The other thing is we want to have fun. Yeah. We want to have fun. It's okay to come to church and have fun. Uh, we, I, I don't want to be Disney, as we were talking about, <laughs> in, in, in something else. Uh, but entertainment gets kids engaged. Yeah. If they're entertained, they're paying attention, and they're participating in this. This is not VBS is not something where generally they're just sitting still listening. They're actively engaged in, in, in everything. And so we want to, we don't have a good time, but we want mostly for them to know about Jesus. There's a third thing. We want to reach out to these families and the communities mm-hmm. and stuff. A lot, of, a lot of these kids, like I said, don't go to church anywhere. Well, they, they need to find a home, and we want to be that place That's for good. them. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of wrapping up this episode, um, I just want to kind of end with a personal one. I think we all know yours, uh, cause you mentioned it earlier, but, uh, throughout the seasons of your life, either when y'all were growing up, uh, younger adulthood, middle adulthood, uh, what were maybe some of the formative things in the summer for your individual walks? I, I'm going to 
I think you've already said it, but I'll, I'll open it up with you first. But, okay. Um, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, that breath to be able to study what you want to study, to read what you want to read, to, mm-hmm. to not feel the pressure to have to um, finish a Bible study on time. Yeah. You know, those type of things were very formative for me. I think Sabbathing for me was huge and finding those places of breath uh, for me, uh, personally was huge. Um, I think, uh, being in environments, Mm -hmm. you know, I think there's a thing, um, Gary Thomas has a book called sacred pathways and he talks about how we best connect to God, whether it be through music or whether it be through nature or whether it be through reading or whatever. One of my highest ones was nature. Reading was the other one, if you didn't figure that out. Um, Mm -hmm. but, and music was the third. And so if I could, have a book with music going in my ears, sitting on a deck in the mountains. It, it, it is. I am. I am next door to Jesus. Overstimulating. <laughs> just get like. I, I am sweating. That's, that's just hurting you right now. That's right. Got a strapper no, going that's, on. That's, that's yeah. That's it. That's it. Right there. Psalms. I, uh, Are my kids fighting in the background? Because I feel like that's all that's missing from that chaos. Wow. Again, different part of life that I'm in right now. No, that's fair. no, that, and that is overstimulating. But if if <laughs> Nature for me, if I can be out yeah. and in nature and get away from my normal routine. And I think that's the key. Jim, why are, why are camps so successful? Because kids get out of their normal routines. Right. Yeah. And they're put in front of Jesus mm-hmm. and they have a blast mm-hmm. and they have fun. Yep. Why are mission trips so impactful? They're mm-hmm. taken out of their normal routine. Right. They're put into a context that's a different type of pressure. Mm-hmm. And then they see God move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm exponentially sometimes, mm-hmm. and their lives are transformed as, as a result. And so I think for me, getting myself out of my normal routine, whether it be sleep patterns, whether it be yeah. whether it be study patterns, whether it be environment patterns, whatever that is, is renewing to me. And I think that's where summer helps. That's good. Yeah. Just Jim, kind of you... taken, made me have had a thought with just that, was just the intentionality of summer, you get all these – you know, the school season is so busy that nine months out of the year, and then you get, it's even less time now in the summers than we used to have when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Um, But whatever time we have and um, just getting to a different um, rhythm of experiences, people used to think, well, you're not really learning in the summer unless you had summer reading in some of your classes. (laughs) But it's just a different way of learning Mm -hmm. you can have with your kids in the family time, whether involved in children's ministry activities or youth group activities or intentional family ministries. They are still learning. They are yeah, still yeah. growing mm. as a Their character is definitely follower shaped, of Christ yeah. in different ways. Yeah, they are. And so when they come back to school, teacher might look at them as different. Like, I saw you as this way, but now you're totally different. Yeah. And you weren't even in school, but you're a different child. You're a different student, and it's for the better. And That's summer good. can create those opportunities for us. That's a good word. That's a good word. Brian, what yeah. was the thing uh, in the summers for you? Well, uh, as a kid... Um, in, in the summer, my dad traveled all over the country with uh, a couple of evangelists, and he led the music and all these crusades, week long, ten day long crusades God, and revival man. meetings and stuff. And in the summer, we got to pick one to go That's with him so cool. on. Sometimes it would be all of us; there'd be five of. He'd take five kids with him. <laughs> my mother got to stay home. <laughs> got to stay home. Her only break. That's because, the ultimate. Uh, you take yes. the kids to the pool, and I take yeah, them out exactly, exactly, for seven exactly. days. <laughs> and to be able to, you know, just spend some time with dad. Yeah. You know, it was that was really it. Dad was gone every other week of my life for the first fifteen years of my life because he was he was proclaiming the gospel in churches all over the country and even around the world. And so that was a big thing, man, we're going to get to go with dad and stuff. And I remember going to just, uh, we got to pick one when we got to a certain age, I can't remember what it was. And it was just us, me and him. And we went to DC uh, because he was there in Maryland at a church. And uh, I just remember the the way I connected to my dad. You know, it was just, I've got him, Finally, to myself as a kid in a big family, yeah. uh, uh, it, I didn't get that very often, and so that was. I look back at that, and and that's a big thing. And and a lot of kids can't look at their dad and say, "Man, the Father in Heaven is just like this." Mm-hmm. I can. Mm-hmm. I can look and go. The God is so much better. Yeah. But I had such an example of a man who loved Jesus. He had his Bible in his hand everywhere he went. He was talking. I got to sit back and just, as a little kid, watch my dad in a in a 
tailor shop getting a suit made, and there's this little Jewish man, and he's telling him about Jesus. That's incredible. And uh, to have that memory, and that's, you know, summer for me was remembering what it reminds me every year what I got to do with my dad as a little kid. So I do try to spend some time with my kids when they were younger, especially, you know, just, yeah. just the two of us. So I would encourage parents, if you can do that, if, you, if you've not spent some time alone with each one of your kids, take this time. Yeah. Go on a little trip. Just get in a hotel room one night. Mm -hmm. uh, make a day trip. Go somewhere where it's just the two mm -hmm. of, of you. Yeah. So. We recently encountered a prompt of just encouraging uh, a walk around the block, just one parent and one child, one day a week. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's just, good. Yeah. And, and they get to pick what you talk about, yeah. which this – Oh, because wow. of the spectrum of ages in our house, um, we've had everything from pretend to be a puppy. Yeah, um, that's a good one. <laughs> to what makes the games on that platform unsafe for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, like we've we've had that full spectrum even in just these last few weeks. But that's, um, yeah, I wasn't one of five. I was only one of three. But yeah, the opportunity for a time alone with parents. Yeah. Those are some of even just the mundane growing up. Mm. Uh, my mom worked in Austin, uh, which was only about an hour from where we lived. But there would be times that uh, she'd have to run errands in Austin. And in the summer, I would get to – Austin's my favorite city in the world. I would get to go run errands with my mom, even as a teenager who hates being around their parents because that's norm for that age window. Oh. That was a – those are still my favorite moments with my mom mm -hmm. is just the the mundane riding in the car. Um, it, in our family life, the thing, that's just me piggybacking off you. Um, the thing in the, in the last four years about summer that's felt like a great catalyst for our walk because during the school year, home feels more like a refuge for me where I, I don't feel like I have to be on or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, that in the summer, developing the rhythm of hospitality and opening the home more mm. than just the designated nights that we have people over um, with our kids has been a real spiritual catalyst, I think, mm. for all five mm. of us. Mm. Them playing with people, them knowing, you know, um, just the, the conversations that, that we'll have with different people and uh, practicing biblical hospitality, which for my wife is, her, is part of her gifting mm -hmm. for me is a practice mm -hmm. uh, and our kids seeing the spectrum of, Hey, mommy loves this and daddy's learning to like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Daddy loves y'all. Yeah. It's just the uh, opening everything up part. But the, um, you know, that's been a real, a real catalyst in the summers for us because we don't have school to wake up for at 6am tomorrow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think one other thing about that, uh, about having people in your home too, in the summer, would provide this. If you live in a, if you've got younger kids and you live in a neighborhood that's got kids, make your house the house kids want to go to. We that doesn't mean just that. you let things go crazy and they yeah, can yeah, do whatever yeah. they want to, but be the house that all the kids go, I want to go to their house. That's good. I want to get, live for yeah. Jesus in front of those kids. We've been praying stuff. for that. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big thing. Um, th there are two things and in, in, in going on to what would I tell parents? Mm -hmm. to do this summer. Two simple things. Uh, uh, Bonhoeffer and... No, I'm kidding, not Bonhoeffer. <laughs> um, oh, <wow. laughs> I, I just had to do it. It's been in my head the whole time we've been here. A.W. Uh, Tozer once there was said... A, <laughs> There was a uh, there was a book put out by, and I uh, like getting away I from our all. staff <laughs> during the summer. That's I what I like to do. I love the book. <laughs> uh, I read read a book years ago from a guy named Brian Haynes. Who it, the book was called Shift, and it was shifting mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. from just the place they come on Sunday and the kids learn about Jesus to helping parents raise their kids for Jesus. And just being a support system yeah. for them. And uh, he had two things that he did at his church. And if you ever talk to Tamara, and she may have mentioned this at the last Bible, uh, I mean, at the last uh, baby dedication, um, two things, faith talks and God moments. Mm. In this summer, when you're driving around with your kids and stuff, you see an ambulance, y'all stop her just to say, you don't got to close your eyes. Yeah. Let's pray for whoever whoever's done that. Uh, when you're out in nature, and, you, and, and this happens to me a lot. We, I don't mm. like to fly. 
I'm not afraid okay. of flying. I just don't enjoy it. There's just oh, nothing enjoyable so about it. Uh, I like the trip. I like the to see the country. And mm-hmm. so if I've driven from here to Canada twice through southern through Southern California mm. that from oh. this way and stuff, uh, and I enjoy it. And my whole family is sound asleep, but I'm just looking around at God's creation mm-hmm. and stuff. So to me, that's that's something. I'm like, get off your phones back there. Yeah, <laughs> get off your phones. Y'all look outside and see what God has done for us because it's it's amazing. So uh, faith talks. Spend a little bit of time. I'm not saying hey, every day you need to open up the Word and y'all going to run through five or ten verses or chapters or anything like that. But when you feel that prompting that God is leading you something, talk about it. Stop yeah. going, you know what? When they bring something up, when you're um, when you're out driving around or something, y'all talk about it. I, I had a family who came to me years ago. A mom came to me years ago, and she said, we, we pulled in to get the car washed. And my daughter said, what does it mean to be part of God's family? And before they got out of the car wash, the little girl had pr- prayed to receive Christ. Wow. Mom was able to to do that, to take that hmm. that moment. That was a that was a, a God moment. Yeah, and that's good. Uh, uh, to to be able to just just be ready for it. So you're saying she ready. got washed clean? She got washed clean. Good. Yes. Good. There's so Sorry. many pastor puns There's in this so story, and I'm just trying to skip them all. <laughs> no, that's an awesome story. That's, that's really good. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that, uh, gentlemen. Thank you all for uh, being willing to carve us into your afternoon. Uh, Thank you, as always, for listening and watching, and please make sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts.